All right, guys, welcome back, man, to the latest episode of the Sim Standard Podcast. Myself, Sim F Ball Critic, along with Smitty and Azure Effect, may or may not be able to make the show. You guys know his schedule. But um, hey, we're happy to have you guys and welcome everybody. And um, you know, before we get started, man, of course, as you might see in the title as well as in the description. Got a ton of stuff to talk about, man. We really want to talk about, you know, briefly, and I say briefly on my behalf, you know, Smitty may have a little more to say, but we'll briefly talk about the interview with Rex that we talked, you know, told you about, told you guys about last week. The interview he had with the uh, Four Verts podcast with Sonny from MBL. I'll give my quick light thoughts on that because it wasn't a whole lot of information to pull out of it, a little, a little bit. And then, of course, Smitty will as well. But mainly, guys, what we want to talk about tonight is the most recent podcast by the Mutt Men. You remember we've referenced these guys before when they had Rex on, but now they had Clint Oldenburg. And there was quite a few pieces of information to talk about or at least chime in on. We probably learned some stuff. I know I did. NYK hit me up saying it was something that he learned as well that we didn't know. So we'll break down some of the key components of that interview. And that'll probably run us through the show. You know, I'm sure this would be a full Madden show tonight. So that's what we're going to pretty much talk about. I will say this. Anybody who wants to come on the show, I see it's about 25 of you guys already watching. Let us know early. Because um, I think it's only right for Smitty and I to go in and just dive into these topics. You know, if perhaps someone wants to come on doing it, maybe we can get you in. But I think it'll be more effective um, if we can kind of just run through this. Because there's a lot of stuff I'm pretty sure we're going to hit on. Um, not trying to exclude anyone, but I'll say if someone like NYK wants to come on, we'll be happy to have him on as an extra panelist, only because I know he listened to the uh, the actual podcast. And so, you know, guys like that who have maybe already heard it, you know, we'll be more inclined to have you on tonight. But outside of that, we definitely want to welcome any guests. But I would say let's try to do that early, sooner than later. You know, so we're not, you know, bringing somebody in and we're in the middle of the things that we're talking about in the interview. And then we go off into something else. Don't really want to do that tonight since we have something really specific to talk about. But before we do that, I'll throw it to Smitty real quick, man. Smitty, do you have any uh, opening remarks, any things you want to talk about throughout the week before we dive into the show? Um, All I really have is, well... All-Star Weekend, you know, was this past weekend. I'll just say this real quick. Uh, they could basically do away with the dunk contest at this point. You know, <laughs> it's it's very disappointing. It, like, it's been disappointing the past two years. And these guys, I mean, it's like they're getting, for the most part, these dudes are getting 50s on dunks that were already done and got rated lower for doing those kind of dunks. And... Another thing that was upsetting, especially Victor Oladipo. Oh, yeah. He did a dunk, and, like, it was uploaded the other day. I saw it on Twitter. It was a dunk he practiced, but he never did it in the contest. And, I mean, honestly, he, he would have got a 50 off of it, like, if, if he had did it. And the stuff he did, it's like he was very ill-prepared, like, for it. And I, I'm just glad that the All-Star game shined. You know, like the All Star game was was a good game. I I liked it. I really liked it. And um, but other than that, I mean, like I said, they could do away with the dunk contest because the three point shootout shouldn't be outshining the dunk. Like that's just that's just it. Mm -hmm. And to see that happening again and again and again, no, we gotta we gotta kill that. Like I mean, they might as well get rid of it until you get some guys in there that are actually going dunk. And plus, you need to have some guys that are all stars that are going to be in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I see people always say, "Like, well, put more money on the line, and then they'll do it." Man, skip all that. You don't need to put more money on the line. They just need to come out there and showcase respect to the contest and do it. The three point shootout guys, they don't get more money. The the people that do the the guards and stuff, and the bigs that do the skills competition, they don't get paid more money. Yet, look what. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, you got the best of the best in those echelons competing. So it's like, no, these dudes need to go ahead and compete. But 
that's the main thing I got on that. Um, I'm glad that the All Star game was good instead of it basically being a layup and dunk line that it's been over the past few years. Um, but yeah, other than that though, uh, Brady. See, oh, one last thing I'll say: that Shaq and Kobe discussion. That was a great discussion, but let's make sure one thing is crystal clear: L.A. was losing that 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 year in 04. Skip all that, man. I just wasn't in shape. I wasn't ready. Scratch all oh, that. Wow. <laughs> y'all say whatever the heck y'all want to yeah. say. Y'all was losing that year. Bottom line, it didn't matter how much and shit. No, I get it. Though. Yeah, I see. I understand what they're saying. Them two guys and how how like dominant they thought they were. I I, yeah. I really understand that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm not saying they're gonna roll over and say, you know what, Detroit was gonna beat it. Like I wasn't expecting to say that, but at the same time. They were they were gonna lose that year. He said Carl Malone was hurt. <laughs> That's even more reason why they was going. They were going to lose that year. Bottom line, so they weren't beating Detroit. But that's all I gotta say though. So we can go ahead from there. Yeah, man. Um, I will echo what Smitty said. Um, and, and uh, let me address uh, God's speed, man. We sent the invite, so hopefully you got it. Um, like I said, we'll get you in here early before we dive into the interview portion, uh, because we got quite a bit to cover there. And, and like I said, you know, it's 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 gonna be much easier for us to go over some of these things and give our reflections uh with it just being Smitty and I. And again, maybe somebody who's already listened to it if you want to chime in. Um, but we'll probably won't have as many call-ins tonight, particularly during that time. Um, like I said, unless it's somebody that has already listened to it. I mentioned NYK because I know he has. That makes a little more sense in that regard. Um, the dunk contest, listen, man, it, everyone has their own opinion. And I want you guys to always remember this because this, this is a, a broad statement I'm going to make, whether it's myself or Smitty or whoever else. These are just opinions. I, I mean, it's crazy, Smitty. I just look at social media sometimes and all of these opinions that people have on you know, this and that, even even when, when either one of us do a, a video, I mean, it's like, it's funny, people people act as if their opinion is fact. I never do that. I always say I could be right, I could be wrong, I don't know, it's just my opinion. So just because what me and Smitty are saying here, even about the dunk contest, don't attack, because I've seen people already like chiming in on the discussion on Twitter. When we, listen, if you thought it was entertaining, great. To Smitty and I, I mean, the era that I remember, I remember, you know, being a kid, you know, when, um, like, when when it was Jordan and Dominique. I mean, when you remember, Smitty, when it was, like, eight to nine people in a dunk contest? Yeah. I mean, this, this part of it now where it's only four people, five at the most, like, the last couple of years, it's, it's whack, man. I don't yeah. like that. And like you said, this particular one, there was some creative dunks, but to me, it was way too many misses. Like, we didn't have too many of those, oh, moments. Right. Like, off of the first dunk. Yeah. Even though a couple of them were a little creative. Like, I'll give, you know, Nash Jr. a little more creative. Oh, yeah. yeah. A little double tap. At first, I didn't see that. And yeah. I was like, oh, that's kind of crazy. But still, it's kind of like nothing blew me away. Right. I mean, this is probably cliche to say, man, but in the recent years, to me, I think, um, what's his name? Gordon and uh, Levine probably brought some excitement oh, back to it. Yeah. Those guys. But yeah. since then, man, I mean, since like Vince, I mean, it's just not the same. And it's not, to me, even if it's, even if you want to say, well, no, Sim, they did do some decent dunks, they did. But the format to me is just it's gotten weaker and weaker and weaker. And less people are getting involved. It's like, come on, man. It's yeah, it's just that's, ain't what I'm used to. That's I'll just say, and I'll say that just to add on to that too. Just say at the end of the day, you got at the end of the day, the sad part is Kareem Abdul Jabbar would have been in more dunk contests than LeBron James. LeBron should have definitely done the dunk contest. Y'all know that's my yeah. One of my, Biggest knocks against LeBron career wise. You yep. were supposed to do that dunk contest when you came in as a rookie or yeah. at least your sophomore year. Come on, man. Yeah. Supposed to be in. Didn't do it. 
I'm also upset that Russell Westbrook didn't do it. I thought he was going to do it back then, you know. But, see, that's what I'm saying. You got these guys that will straight throw their body at the rim when they dunk the ball and everything. And then it's like all of a sudden, oh, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. And I'm like, all right, man. So it's it's corny. And that's what I'm saying. The respect ain't there like that. And once again, man, Antoine, Antoine. you know what I'm saying? Antoine, all day, every day, man. We appreciate you very much uh for the for the donations and just just you chiming in listening man and coming on the show last week but you know that's what i want to say as far as the dunk the pride the the people the players don't take that pride in the contest like that uh i hope that i wish that it was you know i wish that there was more pride because levine and gordon did surprise people and I wish that Gordon could have been in the dunk contest this year because he was going to, but then he had an injury. So that's where I think Mitchell stepped in, you know, but still mm-hmm. you should have had something more better and, uh, you know, prepare and, and prove yourself. Like, come on. But I digress. Yeah, it was, it was pretty weak, man. I mean, like I said, that's it. it it's pretty weak. I mean, what you want me to say? <laughs> that's just my opinion. Yeah. Um, three point shoot cards. Yeah, that was pretty cool, man. Oh my lord, Smitty, we can't get out of here without saying this. And um, uh, our boy um, Lulu wants to come on, man. So I'm pulling up your your email address now because he he actually did listen to the interview, guys, and he's saying that he has. One, one or two concerns, couple positive things. So we we'll definitely want to bring him in and chime in on that because that'll lead us right into that topic. Um, but Smitty, what what in the world was Paul George doing? <laughs> yeah, you know what, man. Come on, PG thirteen, man. Hey, you know what? Even even Jordan entered the three point shootout before, and he's not a good three ball shooter either. Allen Iverson entered that joint, and he's not good at it either. So mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. like. You know, George, that's why it surprised me to see it. It's one of those situations where it's the name. It's not the game, but the name. You know, saying, oh, Paul George in there. Okay, we'll see what he could do. Hey, you know what? Tobias Harris was in that joke. It's, yeah, see, I, I, didn't, didn't, I didn't even know Tobias could shoot threes like that. I had no what, idea. Exactly. See, that's that's my thing. I didn't I knew he could I knew he could hit him, but I didn't know he could hit him like that. So that's what I'm saying. So that's what I mean. Like it, hey, like I said, some people their volume scores, and that's why what's his name is a score, but he's not a three ball shooter. And it's like, you know what? Let me just right. try my hand at this, see what happens. Rhythm so, shooter type of guy. Like he's an yeah. in game type of shooter. Yeah. But oh man, I oh I felt bad. I don't never want to see nobody do that bad. And when they doing anything. But <laughs> I mean, he's still a great, great gamer, a, a gamer, great, great baller. So what you going to say? Um, But yeah, that's about it, guys. I didn't really have much more about all star. You know, the game was pretty exciting. I actually only saw the last one minute. I saw the last 60 seconds of the game, but I didn't even realize that it had came on, uh, you know, at the time that it did. I just wasn't paying attention at the time. And I did get the chance to see the last minute. So that was cool. That score was crazy. Um, but that's all I got. So Zulu, man, hopefully you got the invite, uh, Godspeed as well, but he's saying he can't get in. Oh, he can't get in. Hold on. Let me look at this. Godspeed saying he can't get in. Uh, I don't know what, what tell you, um, what's it saying? Is it, is it telling you you can't join or is it saying, is it giving you some type of error or what? And Zulu as well, man, confirm if you're able to get in. I'll try sending both of you your invites again really quick. And while we do that, since we got a little time to kill, Smitty, why don't you um why, why don't you reflect a little bit on the Rex interview? We'll hit that first. Cause like I said, I don't have too much to say about it. A couple things, but I think Clint's, in my opinion, and not to say that one guy interviews better than the other. I mean, two different formats, et cetera, et cetera. But I think Clint's information was more informative than Rex's most recent interview. Rex usually says a lot. This one, he said a couple things, but it wasn't as 
detailed as things that we heard in the past. But what was your thoughts on, you know, some of the stuff that he had in regards to uh, the Four Verts podcast? Um, what Rich said was, it you know, it seemed like it seemed more like it was pretty light at this point, mm -hmm. uh, considering how early it is. I think that if this interview was fresh off of a game release or more, if it was a little bit later on, we may have gotten a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Because Rex isn't one to usually be more, you know, skip a stone across the surface kind of deal when it comes to his interviews. He usually swan dives right in. So, I mean, the, the big thing for me, only like really the big takeaway I had was the whole – gameplay facet and i mean i know we we briefly touched on that uh last week but i mean there's there's a good amount of gameplay concerns going on with this title and when people heard that that was something that really stood out to some people and they're really nervous about that like oh man i don't know if he's saying that everybody's okay with gameplay and all that mm -hmm. but you know that's why people were really on there and i mean i was you know, dudes tweeting me about it. That's why I waited till now to talk about it. But yeah, I mean, I'm comment on that too. Yeah, I I know that. See, this is the thing. You think about that interview, and now you're walking on eggshells about it. But then at the same time, we also got to think about what about all the other interviews where he said he isn't fully satisfied with where the gameplay is at. What about the other interviews where he said he wanted poetry and motion? He wanted, you know, to minimize shifts, warps, all that stuff. Matter of fact, interviews that he did on this show here. So it's like he's spoke on these things and he's expanded on these things and let us know, hey, we, this is a phase in terms of getting to where we want this game to get to. So it's like, well, I, I you know, I understand what he's saying and I get it. But there's more, you know, like I said, if I was outside looking in and I heard that, oh, without question, I'd be like, no, I'm sorry, bro, but there's a lot of core gameplay stuff that needs some work. And not a ton of work necessarily because there's there's good pieces in there. There's good stuff in there as far as gameplay, but there's a lot that needs to be flushed out. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, you get that stuff flushed out, now we're cooking with gas. That's why he's, you know, that like you got to look at it from, you got to look at it from his perspective, and the types of feedback that he gets. He gets feedback from all across the board. So it's like, what are the big time issues that people are talking about, or that's a big time problem and things like that. And like Sim, you've done videos on it. We've done videos, we've done shows talking about these things, and you hear people talk about things around gameplay. Not always direct, you know, core gameplay, like this core element of gameplay is a big problem. It's usually something around a direct thing mm -hmm. that people have problems with. So it's like when people do that, well, if I'm a dev looking at it, you're telling me, what problems y'all got with Madden? Well, it's not what they put in, but it's the thing around what they put in that's problem. So if you're saying that, then I'm like, well, I guess these people that listen to these sim guys or what have I guess they're they, you know, they have a level of I'm okay with what they have at this point. Not necessarily they're fully, you know, everything's all good and they're fully satisfied, but is satisfactory what we got right now now we can of course elaborate and build out and things like that so that's how i treated it um because like i said just just thinking back not just taking what he said at face value but taking into account what's been said before and then bringing it up to now and what he said in that in that interview there as far as that so that was really my big thing that uh, stuck out to me the most. Because, I mean, you know, we all know the big time elephant in the room is the whole franchise thing, you know, that especially from what he tweeted out. But we all know there's nothing that could be said publicly about that until, you know, later dates. So it's not like he's going, you know, there, there was going to be this big time elaborate, you know, 
detailed explanation on things. So, but, uh, but yeah, that's all I pretty much, that that's pretty much my sentiment of it. And that's because I have a, uh, I have an internal level of understanding of how things are as well. So that's my take on that. I'll give it to you, Sam. Yeah. And I'll be fairly quick, man. Cause we got Zulu on and I want him to kick off, um, you know, the Clint interview. So as far as Rex, same thing with Smitty said. I mean, I wasn't expecting a whole lot that early. Of course, of course, I'm gonna always tell you, make sure you check it out because you could definitely kind of kind of get the sense, you know, the sense of what Rex is thinking and what he's looking for by just listening to him, whether it's early on in the cycle or midpoint or what have you. So that's why I said go listen to it. Now I wasn't expecting him to tell us a lot. It's come on, it's February. <laughs> What's he going to say? I mean, even though Rex in the past has been known to say little stuff like, you know, that's something we might be looking to approach next year. And then a lot of times that is what he's looking to approach. This time he he kind of kept it really general. But two things I will pull from it. Again, he kind of emphasized again, you know, what the direction seems to be in terms of even the pressure that they're getting, you know, or. or like the live service, he referenced that again. So obviously that's going to be something that I'm thinking that we're gonna see at some point, phasing that into CFM and whatever that means, I don't know. But he came on this show and asked us, hey guys, remember about four months or so ago, maybe a little less, a little more, what did he say? What are some things you think that we could build in CFM that you would like to see as a live service? So obviously that's coming i mean we can just say that that's i don't know i can't pinpoint when but come on come on what was he asking that for and then he referenced it again now as far as people being afraid about microtransactions and all that i don't understand the concern i'm gonna say this really quick obviously it's not gonna be anything outside of what mutt is it's gonna be an add-on thing if that happens it's not like it's gonna be oh we gotta pay in order to play cfm <laughs> It's like people jump to way too far with conclusions because why think about this just from a business standpoint why would the model be anything different than what mutt is at the very worst is mutt a must pay no so why would cfm be that way y'all would not believe the amount of messages i've been getting about that man if they do that i'm done i'm not paying to play C do you really think that cfm is going to be monetized to the point that where you have to pay to play right Y'all need to cut that out. Yeah. The second thing, man, is we got to stop having amnesia and we got to stop having like selective memory. Same thing happens with me all the time. I, just today, when I put a video up, this guy comes in there, he tells me, he says, Oh man, I can't believe you saying that Madden is not that far away and all the stuff you just said in the video is not there. That's cool football. And I'm like, So I ain't even reply. I'm just basically thinking, So you missed. All of these other videos I've done, all of the last latest videos I've done talking about what's not there, all of the stuff I say in the actual video when I'm even showing good. I don't get how we do this. So that, that brings me to the point to Rex. And I even told Rex this just to give y'all a quick nugget. I said, yo, you know what you said is going to be taken out of context. I just want you to know that. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not going to go into the conversation, but I can assure you that the man is not satisfied with gameplay. Not at all. He's not. Nobody in that building is fully satisfied with gameplay. So I guess what I'm saying is, man, we got to be a little more, <sighs> I don't want to say intelligent, but we got to be a little more like realistic with the situation. Hearing him say that, I automatically didn't think he meant that. However, just like Wick Smitty just said, if you really look at Twitter, right? Look at the feedback that's often given to him and Clint. I honestly would have to say there's a large consensus of people that's talking about stuff that's kind of outside of gameplay. So if I didn't know Rex, I could say, okay, well, I can see where he's coming from from a general standpoint, even though that ain't my case. He know daggone well. I'm not happy with gameplay. But I can see what he's trying to say is like, well, for the most part – these guys are happy, generally satisfied with the gameplay. There's things that we still need to add, things we need to build out on. But I'm more so hearing that they want features and immersion. And is that not the truth? 
just right even right here on this show a lot of you guys in the chat main thing we talk about is cfm and you know guys telling me they want more uniform depth and all that and these are sim players now sim guys that's some of the, <laughs> the stuff that they want first <laughs> man if you know if i could just get a custom draft class and, and i'm like yeah but so you happy with gameplay all the way see what i'm saying so just to wrap that up man because I, I see we got godspeed on now as well as um, um, what's good man what up and um we got zulu so i'm gonna definitely get these guys on really quick here but i just want to say that man like don't don't take everything so literal even though it's, it's always good to pay attention to what he's saying but by no means is the dude happy with gameplay i mean he said that himself a million times he just recently said he still doesn't feel like they've made a game as good as NCAA 14. So right. take it for what you will, man. But that's just my thoughts. But actually, Zulu, man, I'm sure um, you'll hold on for a moment. I want to get Godspeed on first because um, I'm not sure, you know, if he has a comment in, in regards to the interview or what have you. He just asked to come on the show. So I definitely want to give him his chance first. Um, so what's good, man? Appreciate you coming on, brother. What's going on, man? Yeah, uh, you know, I've been listening for a long time. Like, I got in for a while now. I've been listening to y'all for a little over a year. And uh, in the chats, like, you can kind of go back and forth about what you feel about. And a lot of people have, like, this large variety of how they feel like the game should be approached in this kind of uh, different approach of the information that we all receive on who's doing what and how the game is produced. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a huge pill to swallow for any company to try to make a title as big as the NFL is in our country to be able to make so many different types of levels of players happy. Now, I know that's a, a, a one of the more blanketed statements that a lot of people have already touched on, a lot of things that I feel, a lot of things that I've uh, heard you guys talk about, you know, I wanted to touch on some of those things, but not really drag out the entire conversation, rehashing a lot of those, but maybe some difference, differences of approach from uh, more calling out the names of the corporate guys, more of the guys that uh, I think that mm -hmm. are really the problem. I think if you get a dev team and not realize what a job really concerns, and a lot of these guys in these comments, I don't think they really understand what it's like to really work for a corporation in general. And when you do, you know, you have to understand you have certain criteria to meet, even if that's not necessarily as an employee, what you want to do. Sometimes I think Rex is treated as though he runs the company alone. And uh, I think he's the face. And that's part of the responsibility also that Rex takes. I mean, no one is breaking his arm to do the job. I'm not saying let's make excuses for a title. If you take a job, you take a job. You know, if you decide to be a politician, a lawyer, you get a guy who committed a murder off, you got to take that. I think that's a far-fetched uh, comparison, but it's kind of what I'm saying. He can be held accountable to some percentage as a man, but he cannot be held uh, as responsible for so many varieties of approach to the game. Right. And I think that at this point, we have to consider what we're talking about, which is I had messaged you yesterday. I was talking about uh, what some of the things I want to talk about. Right. So it was about the differences in the communities and trying to bracket these communities from the sim guy perspective. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, your, you know, your, uh, you know, what you want to call it, arcade guy. And uh, what is it competitive? And I don't think that any of us align really with specifically one of those categories, right? I mean, there's an arcade board to games. That's why we like games like Blitz the League, why we like games like uh, Backbreaker. I mean, if you love football, you like contact, you like to get physical. All of us come from a certain section of the game of being inspired by that, that just brutality of the score, the athleticism and the dedication it takes to be that guy on the field. The video games offer that. If you played the sport in, in your life in any way, or coached, you know, whatever you've done, you understand the game from completely different under, uh, positions from a guy who's playing it at home, from a guy who's on the field, and from a professional standpoint. You know, the guys who actually play real football may even have issues with Madden, but that doesn't mean they understand how to make a game or code a game, right? right? So it's not that you're wrong or that Smitty's wrong or that I'm wrong or that you're right. Maybe we all are. But I think, the, I think that we need to build as a community a certain sense of understanding that we all are in this thing together. We've all invested a ton of money into this title. I mean, I've been buying this game since 92. You know what I mean, I, I say I have been getting this game purchased for me since 92. I started yeah, buying it. You know, but I think that uh, we have seen a huge drop off, right? Let's be honest. I mean, since what, 05, 06, we've seen a, a tremendous drop off. You guys have been making videos for years about this. So I'm not going to tell you something you already know. But I do think we have to look at what is the competitive guy and what he's talking about. And I think we need to look at the sim guy, how he developed what the game is today. 
And I actually made a comment to you one time, uh, uh, Smitty, the homie was doing a, a, a live stream and I said something and, and you responded back like, no, it's not us sim guys. And Smitty, I said it to him. He, the natural response is you ain't gonna blame that on the sim guys. You know, you're not gonna blame that on us. <laughs> you know, and, I, and that's not what I'm saying. I'm not here to say, oh, y'all mess up the game. But what I'm saying is there was a time when the game was basically designed off physics, right? And when you look at the heyday, it's not all of the, the, the uh, idiosyncrasies that go into uh, how strong is a guy? You know, uh, uh, how, how tall is a guy? It was all really based on attribute matches of attribute. I think we need to get back right. to the core of that. That's how games like are successful, like Backbreaker or, or uh, you know, uh, your 2K5s. And, and let's be honest, the whole glorifying 2K5 and 2K8 thing is, is kind of ridiculous. Because if you mm. really sit there and play those games for hours and you mess with them sliding, those games ain't perfect, man. They got not, problems, not tremendous good. problems. Some of the same problems that you argue about this happening in Matt right now is in those games. Now, what those games like 2K5 did bring, was presentation. I mean, I'll say that when it comes from a presentation standpoint, obviously we haven't seen any titles do that since then. And I think we need to more, more so even start talking about that instead of month. Maybe maybe from the franchise perspective, maybe we shouldn't expect an all out better game this year. Maybe we shouldn't expect 2019 or 20 to really be the year. We always talk about the year per se. No one knows when that's gonna be from a corporate mm -hmm. standpoint. Unless you got Andrew Wilson in this chat, or you actually talk to those guys, getting interviews with those guys, you'll never know exactly where that title is going. So I think we need to figure out as a community how to move the game forward with less complaints and more productivity in all of these channels to come together and figure out a way to figure out brass tacks. What exactly are we looking for? I do think this is going to be the year of franchise. I remember uh, doing some of the interviews you guys had uh, just after E3 when you guys went to the EA Play and all of that. Uh, a lot of those interviews were... I was it was it EA Play or was it just a man release? Was it EA Play y'all went to last year? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when y'all went to that, it was a lot, a lot of interviews, a lot of asking those targeted questions. And, and you can just tell when Rex is answering these questions. It's like some of these questions are hard for me to answer, but they can't really give you a full answer for these questions. And I think that upsets the community, you know. And uh I, I don't want to go too much on Rex. I think y'all understand of having a closer relationship with him, what that's all about. And it's of course being hard working adults and you know, having to put food on the table, you grasp that concept. But I think that uh, I think that moving forward, we need to be at a place where we try to uh, instead of talking about what mutt is and talking about what you know this or that mode may be. Uh, what is it the uh, the uh, what's what's the mode called uh, where they got like the little uh, cinematics and all that? What's the mode? I totally forgot. Long shot. What oh, is it? Long shot. Long shot. Long shot. Yeah, so with long shot, I don't think that I don't think they need to, to take that away. I think they should keep that from a, a position of, of making money. I don't think that the muck guys should not get what they want. I think that now it's too embedded and intertwined into the game to just remove it. So I think that they should keep on with what they have, but I think they really need to focus on franchise this year in order to maintain the high percentage of guys that have been continuously purchasing this game for that franchise. They're going to lose a lot of guys this year. I, I think for a lot of guys, it is make or break in 2019. And I fully yeah. agree with that. Fully, fully agree. Because yeah. like, 19, 19, it's like what um, one of the guys here, here with the chat was saying, and I agree with him. He's, you know, he said, it showed improvement with this team up until Madden 18, and then it seemed like it fell off. But we all know why. Now, there's not an excuse. But y'all remember, Smitty, and I kind of told y'all that beforehand, like, yo, we all asking for frostbite, but just what if when frostbite comes into play, there's somewhat of a lull in that year's game? Smitty actually said that first. Come to find out it happened. And, you know, really, Madden 18, let's, let's be honest, what it really was was a transition from frostbite, which was pushed heavily by the big dogs. Something y'all might not know. I said this on a couple shows ago. I been at EA play two years ago. I'm sitting there with one of one of my my guys, like one of my my boys, as far as a dev that we always great relationship. And he's like, "See that right there? That's why we, the push is for frostbite." I was like, "What? They showing the Battlefield One trailer?" Right. I was like, "Word." He said, "Bro, they they said we need that now. They want every game looking like that." I was like, "What you mean, like now?" He was like, "Like we got to get to it." We weren't quite ready to do it, but they said it's got to happen this year. So basically, there was a, a push, get the frostbite, right? That took a ton of – I mean, Rex pretty much said it, like my man just said in the yeah. interview. If you listen to him, 
it kind of told y'all, man, that took a lot out of us. Coming from my perspective, me and Smitty, like some of the, you know, behind the door stuff, y'all have no idea. I mean, it was literally people in the building. I'm going to keep it light here. I don't want to go too far, but it's literally people there like, yo, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen by release. I'm scared. It was like that. That's why y'all seeing so many bugs. Like it was, y'all, I mean, listen, I'm not an engineer and I'm not a designer, but I've been around enough people that do that kind of work, even outside of gaming. I get it. You mess with one little thing and you're trying to bring a port a new system in. That's intense coding, intense work, blah, blah, blah. So Madden 18, to get where it is, was a great feat. But you're not going to see a, a big leap. And long shot took a lot of resources which we all have said that shouldn't have happened when it did, but big bosses want something to sell and that's oh, yeah. why it happened. So 19, come on, man. Like, even though Smitty and I have, we know some of the behind the scenes, even we're like, listen, I'm not trying to hear it for 19, man. I don't, I don't want to hear. Well, no, 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 no. We need to see the same progression that we saw from 15 to 16 to 17 19 needs to hit and hit hard with gameplay and CFM. Now, I'm not telling you you got to do every single thing, but we all should be able to say, yo, they did some good work this year. If we ain't saying that, it's a failure, in my, at least for our crowd. Yeah, yeah. What so, you think, Smitty? No, yeah, no, I'm in full agreement with you there. I mean, I fully agree with the point. So, I mean, the thing is, like, what I was saying in my stream earlier is that, you know, like, shout out to some guys that were online earlier tweeting and stuff saying, like, what's the one thing, one big time burning thing you need out of franchise uh, for this year with Madden? And my thing is, it could be one facet, but it needs to be, it needs to encompass multiple things because Madden. Matt is not in a place like 2K with my league or FIFA with their career mode or MLB the show or anything. It's not in a point where you can say, okay, what's the one thing? We got we got 85 things in here you could do. What's the one thing that you really need? It's like, no, you've been in a lull period for so long. That's not that's not feasible to say what's one thing. <laughs> you gotta have multiple things. And even if it's based, even if it's like, okay, off season. That could be the thing, but I got seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty things that if you guys could get at least five or six in, cool. And then give me some progressive updates during the year. Ah, uh, cool. You got something. Cool. But it's got to be something to cook with gas. With you got to be cooking with gas. You're not, you know, what we got right now. It ain't hitting, and there's no, there's no. Like I said, there has to be fear. There has to be stakes. There's no stakes in franchise mode there's no stakes in gameplay and the thing is like i've said multiple times over and over again the stakes that were put into the game were took out because people complained or 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 nerfed so what's gonna have to happen and see like what sim said that's the whole thing right there i'm pretty sure rex would love to leave things in there but he's got to you know there are Somebody put their hand on that shoulder and be like, you got to do it, Rex. You got to do it. You know, so it's like you got to do it. But I would love to see what, like with the UFC game culture, which is an EA product, that there is no THQ. There is no Undisputed 2018 coming out. It's the only UFC game out. These dudes came out with this game, High Learning Curve. Steep learning curve, people giving it bad reviews because it's hard. All that stuff. These cats are like, hey, we told y'all we was making a realistic game. So we told y'all about the techniques. We gave y'all all the modes and options. You guys got to learn the game. They're not going to just scale it back because it's hard. They're just letting you know, like, look, this is what you're going to have to do, though. And that's it. Madden has more than enough options. You got options. Now we have the the play styles, which was something that had to be put in, like Sim said. Even though it's that engine transition historically from PS1 to PS2 to 360 to here, every year that happens, the game always 
is is like a somewhat stale transition. It's not going to be this overload of OMG, look what they did, or even an engine. In this case, we're talking engine port. So that was expected. But what I'm seeing going forward, though, is like like we talking about CFM, but we got to see gameplay change. And that's why when we get into the stuff about Clint's interview and everything, I got some burning stuff about that, too. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, gameplay is like number one. Franchise is 1A. So they're both the same importance level. I'm not saying give me gameplay. You could be somewhat like, no, 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 no. Both of them have got to get hit. Like Hold since then, time out. What up? You know, anytime I see a crazy comment, I, and this is just me saying, <laughs> my opinion. All right, I got it. I got a <laughs> comment. So I be playing around with this guy Luck or Luki W. Oh. I'm not sure how he pronounces it. <laughs> so this is exactly the point I try to make, guys. So the feedback that he gives in the first comment, he says, "We need jersey pools, better weather, and officials." I'm with you with the jersey pools. Yeah. But if you were to send that to Rex, does that sound like actual gameplay? Better weather and officials. Now, better weather, yeah. But you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I see this all the time. A lot of the stuff that they're pushing out front, coming from us guys, is like secondary stuff to hardcore gameplay, like positioning mattering, uh, physics, player mm -hmm. movement. All of this stuff. Now, of course, you might want that too, but what I'm saying is a lot of times I see people highlighting these things. Now, the second thing you said, Madden was good all the way up to Madden 12. So Ooh. you telling me that Madden 11 was a good game? <laughs> Ooh, I don't know about that. Madden 08, well, that was decent. That was probably yeah. one of the better ones. 09, 07, but Madden 11, dog. <laughs> so this is what I'm saying. I'm not downing you. I'm just saying everybody's opinion is different. So it's you got to understand it's hard for me sometimes to I don't want to say this in the wrong way, but some of the feedback that I see, I kind of just gloss over it because it's like we're not on the same page. And that's no disrespect. It's just and I see that coming at Rex, too, is what I'm saying. It's, it's some stuff I see that people throw at Rex that's not even priority to them. You, you, so it's. We can't have this mentality like whatever we want is just that's all they should do. It, we can't. My man just said it. It's a business, dog. We we are a piece. Mm -hmm. We are a chunk of this pie, and we have to push for what we want. Yes, but we got to stop acting like the game is only made for us, and that's any sport. Now, I will say, two K has done a better job replicating basketball, yet they still have problems. MLB The Show is doing a phenomenal job representing oh, yeah. baseball yeah, yeah. let me tell you something i got people always coming in my mlb stream saying it ain't realistic and they mm -hmm. go into stuff like you know the pitch count all this other stuff and i'm like whoa whoa he overloaded me i don't know that much about baseball <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> <laughs> same thing with fifa so it ain't just yeah. all yeah. of these games i guess what i'm saying is they all have their struggles they are a little ahead of madden but come on man let, we got to stop acting like everything falls in our lap it just it's just not what we want, just us. Because clearly we're not that four, six, uh, uh seven million copies that they we're not those guys that they're selling. Those people are happy with this game. So you know, you just gotta understand the situation, man. But I ain't mean to interrupt you there, Smitty, but go ahead, brother. No, you good. No, you good. But no, that that's all I was saying. You know, like I said, my, my main point was that you know, like I say, gameplay and franchise are both neck and neck with the value especially this year because Madden has been in, like I said, it's been pretty much in a lull state, you know, over the years. And then seeing all the stuff that was done within Mutt, you know, the progressive, progressive development there, modes added in, modes added within the mode, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Salary cap and, and Super Bowl and little seasons. And now you got these weekend leagues and all that. So it's like, we need to have not necessarily saying we got to have live update stuff that happens in the franchise. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that there needs to be the dynamic in there. So that way, when we do play franchise, we got stuff to look at and play and feel that we got to give, you know, we give that intensive care about and say, oh man, what, 
what happened in my league is different from what happened in your league. And it's not because I'm running my league through daddy leagues and you running your stuff through Facebook and the way we do stuff because of our rules being customized. That's what makes us different. No, it's because the way the game is in general, it gives me that diversification because of the tools and elements that are in the game. It, it, it all plays a tangible role, but game plays first foremost. That's why, that's why I look at a game like FIFA and the way the gameplay is in there, uh-huh. and the, the, the elements in there are so dynamic that I could play like if that was a football game playing like that, even with the stale, even with the pretty much the stale settings that are in CFM currently, I'd be like, yo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, let's let's do it, you know what I mean? Because the gameplay dynamic is there. Your player, your player can be garbage. You could have a garbage player on your squad, and they still matter in terms of performance. In Madden, you have a garbage player, it, it's like no point. They got to be at least this rating in order to be effective. And it's like, no, you got players that are effective and they're not necessarily that. And it's not just because they're fast. They're able to do more than that. So that's what I'm saying. There has to be counters for all that. Like I was playing the game earlier. Uh, Messi, look, Messi is fast as all get up. Okay. That dude is a speed ball all over the field and he's got ridiculous ball control, but if you are able to take the, the CPU was taking different angles of pursuit because while they're not as fast, they'll still have me off and they'll physically body me off the ball. So that you see what I'm saying? It's like, there's, there's a method to what they do to counter it. And it's in the game already. And Madden though, we it's, it's, it's pretty much one and two. It's not about, physical stature mattering it's like oh i got this rating so i should beat you every time right, right. regardless of what you got and it's like no nah, but what about my position what about my height what about my you know what i mean my weight and such if i got you beating other facets then i i own you that makes the matchup stick not matter to me and that's why i'm saying those are the stakes when the stakes ain't there then we just play in a game like, all right, let's just go through the motions and get this game over with so you can go play the next guy. No, it needs to be a lot more than that. So I'll throw it back to you, Sim, man. Yeah, man, I definitely want to transition to the Clint interview. So real go quick, ahead. man, Godspeed. Just want to give you an opportunity, man. Mm-hmm. Anything else you have for us, man, before you go? Oh, no, man. Uh, that was it. I mean, I guess I'll get in on there next time, you know what I mean, uh, and check y'all out next Thursday. Yeah, man. Well, we you know we always appreciate you guys. All of you guys are welcome. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use him as an example. My man was in another stream of mine. It's like, yo, I want to come on Thursday. He did exactly what we always say. Please, man, don't be bashful. Don't be shy. Come on the show. I mean, we would love to have you for a segment or a panelist, whatever. Come on, man. That's We want this to be a community show. I know y'all tired of hearing me and Smitty talking all the time. We want everybody else give their their thoughts y'all drive the show that's what that's the vision but yeah man we definitely appreciate you coming on man and anytime you want to come on feel free let me know i'm gonna store your email address here so i have it um because i actually got a list of a lot of you guys email addresses with your name beside it so i don't have to keep asking you to send it but appreciate you coming on so i'm gonna get zulu in first man i'll let him kick off um his thoughts on the clint interview and then smitty and i will you know try to knock out some points as well That'll probably run us to the end of the show. Um, just wanted to reply real quick again to uh, Luck or Luke. Uh, not sure how you pronounce it, but again, keyword in what you just said in your statement, you said to you. <laughs> you said Madden 12 was better to you. That's the whole point. Everyone's opinion is different. And that's why I don't approach the devs with that blank, like that blanket statement of, oh, y'all must. Y'all. I just tell them what I like. And if you listen to Clint, Clint even goes as far as telling you how you should deliver the, the feedback as far as, you know, instead of just saying that, why don't you say, you know, how how should we make this work? Like, they really listen to this stuff. But just saying, oh, Madden 18 is trash. Oh, Madden 9, oh, 9 was bad. That, that's not feedback. You see what I'm saying? I'm just trying to educate, man, because like my man Godspeed said, we have to start, especially our community. They listen to us, first of all. But we're the small, we're the small fish here. We got to start 
being more collect you know, as a collective and more beating on the same drum so to speak now we all different individuals but we got to have some type of like procedure and how we deliver things so our points hit hit hard you know what i'm saying it's not like just one of us or just 10 of us is saying it this way but then you got 40 people who saying oh man f man 18 y'all trash y'all need to make your game better we don't need that <laughs> we need real feedback and if you do feel that madden 12 was better had better ai etc cetera, etc cetera, elaborate that a little bit because uh, like myself and a lot of people here i believe in the chat we all looking like no i i can't agree that madden 12 was better now you know if you say it you know break it down tell me what how, how you thought that then maybe i could see it in a different light but i'm just recalling playing those games madden 12 was the first one that started to turn the corner and madden 12 did introduce some zone play differences as far as how they react but do y'all remember what was the problem in that game i mean we started getting the ice skating the figure skating was happening big time in madden 12 y'all remember that mm -hmm. you see yeah. what i'm saying so is <laughs> this is what i'm saying it, it was band-aids man and, and they that habit is still there a little bit where they use band-aids they fix this but they never fix the core problem they just introduced this to overcome something else now nah, we can't keep doing that but let me fall back on that man zulu man has been a while man we happy to have you on the show always love your insight so i'm getting ready for this what's your thoughts man overall with what you heard man with the clan interview Yo, zulu zulu you there zulu <laughs> yo zoo i don't hear him he's there but I don't hear him. All right. Let me see. We'll wait a few seconds. Let us know if you can hear us, Zulu. Um, either you know, either attempt to say something and maybe it's not working, or type in the chat if you are trying to say something and we can't hear you. I see you definitely in here. So I guess what we'll do, man. Um, I'll throw it to Smitty first, and we'll reflect on a couple things um i'll let smitty you know say one of the main things he wants to hit because i have a list of stuff here so if smitty doesn't address one of those things then i you know i'll cover some of the things that he didn't and whenever you come in if you can hear us um just say hey i'm here and we'll stop what we're saying and we'll let you come on in how about that but all right smitty what's some of your takeaways man um how about this i'm gonna give you the little list that i got all right and then we can if some of yours are the same we could just check and just go to each one all right definitely want to cover uh what he said about the traits determining behavior um and how the animation would play out but the ratings dictating the outcome that's mm. interesting i want to dive into that uh what else do i have here uh this is all one here so let me circle that conservative pass rush was designed to help with screens draws and scrambling quarterbacks sounds like it's really designed to be more of a mush rush interesting uh he talked about compressed sets and how they need to implement coverage rules and ai to handle those uh he said the devs responsibility to combat the meta that's coming out of the game so it's up to them to determine how they need to develop and introduce things to you know kind of combat the meta that people are using he said that awareness is used as a modifier in multiple areas he said that uh one crowd shouldn't influence the innovation of madden i know smitty want to hit that one uh he says he prefers that there's more variance with the thresholds for example he said he said this verbatim if there's a 91 zone guy and the other corner is a 97, he wants to be able to attack the weaknesses of the 91. I fully agree. So we're going to talk about that if we can. Mm -hmm. Clint says that the NFL pass rush is the target as far as the time for the park in the pocket. He says that both in Madden as well as um, what the comp guys want, you know, what they want and what we want are all, are all longer than actual NFL yes. time. That's yep. interesting. <laughs> yeah, I know what's going on. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we yeah, got there we go. There we go. All right. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> I got two more. I don't, I don't even know what happened. I just kept talking. All right. So, 
Man, um, hold on, Zulu, real quick. Oh, I got hold on, hold on, one wrong. sec. Bro. Two hold more on, things on the list, but then I'm gonna come right to you right right after that. Uh, the other thing Clint said is difficulty with adaptive AI is determining when it should trigger. That's interesting. Uh, we'll expand. I'm gonna, I ain't gonna go too far on that one. We're gonna expand on that when we talk about it. And then the last thing I have, he has a list that he says there's no zone thresholds in simulation. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. Yeah, I want to talk about that. <laughs> That's the list, guys. But we're going to let Zulu kick this thing off, man. First and foremost, welcome, man. Glad you're back on the show. What's yeah, it's thoughts, been a minute, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've been mad busy, you know, so it's it's like, you know, I check in, in and out, but I haven't even been able to, to, to listen to some of the shows. Um, So I was glad I, was, I started to be able to catch up, especially, you know, once the NFL season you know, with that Super Bowl and everything. But if I could just take a second to to piggyback off what uh, y'all were saying with Godspeed, I, I I agree that there's no right or wrong with regard to the approach to the game. But I think there is a right or wrong relative to the goal. So if if the goal is the same, if the goal is about that movement, if the goal is about making Madden – uh, and I don't want to use the word realism or competitive anymore. I want to use realistic relative to Sunday, relative to Monday or Thursday night football. If that is still the goal and we're start, still part of that movement, then there is some right and wrong. And that's the only way I'm listening to. And everybody should listen to Clint's interview, but that's the only way I can even hear the things he says. I, I'm not looking to try to, you know, catch him in a lie. I'm not right. looking for ways to try to figure out if he caught. No, I mean, a lot of times you, he was trying to, you know, um, not speak out of turn. He's trying to be very careful because, you know, they're, they're probably near the end of the cycle for Mad 19, 19, right? So <laughs> so he's trying to be careful. So I'm, I'm only about the movement. I'm only concerned with realism. And I got a, 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 a good, bad, and the ugly. And let me start with the good so y'all you, can see where I'm headed, right? I like the fact that throughout the interview, and I think y'all were feeling this too because you started to talk about this like literally just now. I like the fact that Clint was talking about stats and traits and compressed sets. And he was yeah. talking about leverage and, and the position of the corners. And he was talking about how, yeah, there are some run plays that, that are better than others and that should not be the case. We want to scale them a certain way. And we, I mean, they have a plan. And and I think that 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 is a sign that that is an optimistic sign for those of us who are about that movement, right? That that if they have a plan, that means there's some long-term stuff that they're not telling us. That's excellent news. Um I'm a little bit concerned. This is where this is the bad is when. I like the idea of the three different modes. You got the sim, the competitive, and arcade. But I was concerned when he said that they are challenged to have enough tests relative <laughs> to all three phases. Uh -huh. That really concerned me because that tells me that, you know, um, uh, Rex and Clint need more help. And that's both in terms of human labor as well as resources. Right. So so again, that speaks to a long term plan. And clearly in Madden 18, they just didn't have much of either. Right. So so once you implement that plan, though, again, you can look toward the future and say they can build on this. Um, and, you know, the ugly part is where I get a little concerned about the plan, because, I mean, y'all were, were just now starting to talk about it when they when, when Clint was talking about pass rush. And he was like, yeah, Bosa, there's a delay in his reaction time. And then he still got a win. And I'm like, oh, no. Do you not realize that three seconds just to react and then try to win? That, that quarterback then looped out of the pocket. The quarterback then, you know, he's got his halfback blocked. Quarterback, I mean, there's so much that goes on in three seconds in Madden that – I have a problem with putting a delay on an elite player. Right. And so when I, when I, cause you know, and then my mind starts working, right. I'm like, okay, so how do you expect a cover two to work when the pass rush has been neutered? So if you, so if you're saying we need to figure well, out how to make compression set, Oh, oh you, you about to say something? 
No, I'm just gonna say real quick. He was talking about a mutt cam though. Yeah. When he said because he was talking about that secure, what was it secure guard or whatever it was, secure the name pocket, of the ability. Or something like yeah, that. something like that. So it was like it delays his rush. He says it's usually like half a second, usually, or whatever, but it ends up being right. delayed for like two seconds because of that. Like two seconds before they can do their first move. Right. So, but that's but but I hate that by thing, the way too. I, this yeah. thing about it. Well, but if you well, but if you got a but but if you have a guy with that kind of ability, it's only, how do you counter that? Well, that, uh, that's see, only fair. That's the the next phase of the problem. I'll just say it real quick, but I don't want to take away from what you and Zulu are saying. Yeah. The real issue with this game, and we're gonna probably dive into this in this last hour. How do they replicate the stuff we want? That's the biggest yes. problem. Because I get what they're trying to do with that. If you got the secure pocket or whatever, they're trying to replicate now the you know the chemistry is making these guys block better. But how can they do it organically without putting a delay on this guy? But at the same time, I agree with, with Zulu. It's kind of like, like I don't honestly, I don't know how they're gonna accomplish making especially us guys happy <laughs> to where the game is not. Because you got to have some, like, I don't know if there's any game right now, even FIFA, where FIFA does a good job that can fully capture this see, this matchup, this, this, this guy's physics, this guy's angle, this guy's torque. You know what I mean? Like, Madden is going to have to find a better way to replicate what they're trying to showcase with the secure pocket, with the elite pass rusher, with the um, secure tackler. Because the way they're doing it now, I can clearly see, like Zulu said, the problem with hearing that is like, wait a minute, you mean you're going to delay this guy? But it's like, how else? They got to find better ways to create these, replicate these real world situations. And I, I don't have the answer because I'm not an engineer or a designer. So I kind of, I don't want to say, I don't want to say these words because I know people are going to chop this up. Oh, you heard what Sim said. But I kind of give, on that side of things, I give game developers in general a pass because we're asking them to replicate even 2K. We're asking them to replicate real world things like from a computer program standpoint. How you do that, I don't know. I can only give you my idea, but I don't know how these things are really able to be accomplished. So that's the tough, that's the yin and the yang of it. Like I fully agree with Zulu. But then I understand what Smitty is saying too. Is like it's that's what they use to counter this trait or counter this Kim, and it's tough one there, man. That's a tough one. Well, well, and and let me pick it back off of both of y'all, right? So, number one, everything that that we're talking about is true up until you play the computer. They mm -hmm. don't care how nasty that pass rush is when you play the computer. So my point is simply. Right. If they were consistent, I would agree with y'all. But it's not because clearly when they say, well, the game needs to be more competitive, if you move up from pro or rookie to all pro, first thing the CPU does say, okay, I got to ramp up the, the pass rush the to stop this dude from throwing. Yeah. So to me, it's dishonest to say that, well, I can't have a, a Joey Bosa do what he's supposed to do when the computer does it when he has Joey Bosa. So that to <laughs> me is number one. Right. But more importantly, right? So we're heading into Mad 19. Who just won the Super Bowl? How did they get there? Mm -hmm. They got there because you have a team, uh, line them up in the NFC. You got teams of elite quarterbacks, pretty good offensive line. Some of them had elite offensive line. Philly had depth on the defensive line. They could rotate their starters out, still have a pass rush. They don't even have to have you know, eight elite guys to get on an elite offensive line. That's my issue. That right. the zone coverage, the man coverage, the Rip Liz, which really has been an, a wonderful innovation for Madden 18, and I think it was 17. Yeah, 17 and 18. For Madden 18, 17, all that stuff is neutered the moment you say Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, the entire <laughs> Eagles defensive line working in tandem, working in tandem that well now that doesn't matter as much because gamers want pretty pass play 
football ain't a pretty game. They, like, you know, J Tom Brady made that game look pretty for f three and three quarter quarters. And then it uh, just fell apart. He was like, man, I, I got to go down the field. And what was it? Uh, 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 45 seconds. And these, 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 these monsters are coming right. And then what happened? Fumble, which for me as a Raider fan, that was wonderful. <laughs> he fumbled. So, so again, if if the goal is realism, <laughs> as a Raider fan, right, I, I just caught that. I'm just saying, <laughs> if the goal is realism, oh, Sunday, Monday, Thursday, if that's the goal, right, then how can you build a secondary without pass rush? How can you have? Mm -hmm. How can you and even in Mutt value a Bosa and a Cleo Mack when you've already decided that if you build up <laughs> your defensive line, the, uh, your opponent doesn't have to build up their offensive line. See, to me, it, it, this is the balance that I think, you know, Smitty is, is, is talking about. But I'm saying, yeah, but, we, but this extends to every facet of the game. That how, what, what kind of game would we have if we had a great defense line, but secondary couldn't cover anything? Well, the, the, that balance has got to be there. And that's why when I, when I listen, and everyone should listen to the interview, you know, but when I listened to the interview, I was concerned because I'm no longer hearing a unified vision, I hear a little concern on their end because they don't feel like they can trust gamers. Uh. And and if they can't trust us, then that forces them to compromise on the goal. And once you introduce compromise, that can undermine what kind of game we get Madden 20, Madden 21, whether it be on a PS5 or whatever the new Xbox iteration is going to be. That, that Once you compromise the game, you, you, it's going to be very difficult to then turn back around and make the game that you want. You, it, 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 the, the goal gets farther and farther away when you start making those missteps. And that's, that's literally, uh, the, you know, the good for me, the good, bad and ugly. That's literally, you know, the kind of questions that we've been asking throughout Madden 18. Do ratings matter? How much do they matter? And how am I supposed to play the game? And that, that's my 10 cent. Man, it, I have some of the same concern that you have because hitting on that, talking about uh, the game, well, the game styles, right? One thing I've always had a concern about, and I'm actually going to do a separate video about this, maybe later tonight. But when you when you read the specs on those game styles, right? When they first dropped them, right? Could we not agree that some of the stuff that they mentioned for competitive, we would like to see in simulation? Oh wow! Yeah, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a minute, why, why isn't that in simulation? And Rex often refers to he often says, uh, "Competitive guys." This is the biggest catchphrase that he says, and this is not picking on Rex; he knows that. But this, this is what he says: Competitive guys want user control. Simulation guys want more variables, and you know, with dice rolls. Now, what he's saying is. That's the only way they could deliver it to us right now is those different variables like a, like right now you play with I'm playing with Josh Dobbs in our CFM at my our online league. Ben is gone. We in like our third season, and I can clearly tell it's Josh Dobbs <laughs> throwing downfield. But and I appreciate that. But we also want user control. I don't want it to be where it's a game where well you know we're gonna let more ratings kick in. Great, but we lose some control, whereas the competitive guys get an edge with with stick skill. And I'm like, nah, that should be across the board. So that was already concerning. But piggybacking on what Zulu just said, it sounds like now, and, and I don't know, guys, because I, I haven't been there this year so far. And usually by now, Smitty and I have already been there. We haven't been there this year. So I don't, you know... I couldn't tell you anyway, but I don't even know internally what the goal is right now for 19. But what I will say is what does concern me a little bit, and maybe if I did know, I wouldn't be as concerned, is it does seem like what Clint was saying is they're still trying to find the balance. And some good things he said was like trying to make the one game that everyone can enjoy – but it does sound like they're overly focusing on competitive sim arcade. Yep. Yep. I don't like that too much, man, because I've told them this in their faces. I've said, hey, I want y'all to make the game the way 
all of y'all in this room think the game should be. Make that game. Now, the separation of play style can be little stuff like they have now. Oh, maybe penalties kick in more when you play on <laughs> on our sim or you know you have a few absolutes like on competitive you know for since that's a thing you know we all know that's an e-sports thing now maybe you will allow more interceptions if it hits them in it, whatever but the way you design the game from the core you cannot focus on trying to make a game for all of these different people and if there's any positive zulu it did sound like clint was bringing it back home a little bit when he said look we because i actually i wrote that down he says uh where i have it here i have it here somewhere he says one crowd shouldn't influence innovation of mad yes right yes. yeah but where zulu and i share this sentiment it definitely sounds like early on in that interview that it does sound like certain areas are influencing mm -hmm. not the way they you know and we can't have that man make just make well, a football game it, well, yeah. So, so for me, there there are variables that are outside. I mean, and, and I, I hate using the term "sim" now because mm -hmm. I think that muddles the issue. But I'm going to use it just for this, just to follow up on what you just said. That when you play a CFM game, there are moments when I feel like my quarterback has had his arm yanked, and I don't know why, and I don't understand, and I know I planted both of my feet. I, I. I, you know, I'm still in the pocket. I've rolled a little bit to the left. I have a good left tackle. And all of a sudden, it feels like someone's just yanking my arm for an entire drive or perhaps for an entire quarter. And then it gets back to normal. And I, I, when I so when, when I think of variables, I'm, I, I want to be clear that a variable is my quarterback hasn't thrown an interception in three weeks. So now there are now he's sharper than he normally would be. Mm -hmm. Um, he's playing in Oakland and y'all don't want to come to Oakland and face my boy, right? Or he's been beat up a lot and he's a little tired and he's sore. And so right now I've already thrown 12 passes and it's the first quarter. And all of a sudden, you know, there's a noodle arm and the ball isn't going where I'm using. So when you introduce environment, the gamer can then understand how he's supposed to manage the game. When you throw in variables as if they're supposed to be random, that's where we get hot. Now, the competitive players take it to the nth degree, right? They expect every game to be played on a neutral field with no influence, and they want everyone to have 100 awareness. And that's where I think the schism is, and I hate using these terms comp and sim, but I think that's where the schism is, that I think – Clint and Rex need to think of the competitive guys as having players with 100 awareness. Mm, yeah. And sim players don't want that at all. They don't want everyone to have 100 awareness because you couldn't fill the team with 100. Okay, you know, the, the what is the 85 Bears? Maybe their defense all had 100 awareness, but that offense was janky. You know, you, you got the wonderful elite top three all-time running back, and you had a quarterback who liked to throw it deep. And that's, you know, they're, they're struggling, but they know they got that defense. So the coaches know that, hey, we can ease up a little bit, then take shots. Like, that's the management of the game that the sim player wants. The competitive right. player is like, no, everyone's supposed to have one in awareness so that if I throw into a spot and that spot is empty, I know that there's a particular outcome. But again, note how I'm focusing on stats, right? And that's where I, I, I think, again, it's about the movement. It's about the goal. It's the goal to say that regardless of stats, if you throw to an open receiver, you should catch the ball. We got to we, we we have to get back into alignment. So most of I mean, again, everyone should listen to the interview. I think there that there are some positives to come out of that interview, particularly as he's telling us there's so much Madden code. He, he said he said like there's so much Madden code that that if you, if it were money, there's more money in the game than you and I will ever make in our life. It was funny. I was like, wow. That's some. They still got some PS3 and PS2 code in there. Okay, I understand what you're implying. There's some. There's some problems. They're working out. I respect that. I love the fact that he's so open and honest. We need more of that. With that said, that means that the goal is to make sure that the game lines up with the stats. Player attributes have to be uh, um, uh, the driving force of the game because you can't create physics without the attributes that are, that, that that respond to the physics, right? Right. And, and then on top of that, 
at some point, even the competitive guys who want 100 awareness, at some point, even they have to acknowledge, well, I need to coach. I can have all the wonderful plays in, in, in the world, but if I'm just stacking plays, I'm not winning the uh, uh, $100,000 in the Madden tournament. So if we're going to talk about coaching. That can be another driving force. But but once we start getting bogged down, the, difference between, the differences between sim and competitive, I think that that it can even cause the developers to lose sight on what the goal is. The goal is to have a game that replicates Sunday, Monday, and Thursday. The goal is to have a game in which my best players can still get beaten based on leverage and position, weight, and height. My best players can wind up getting hurt if my if I, who control the quarterback, keep throwing him into coverage and he gets lit up. Like, th- what we do in the game matters, but that's only relative to the stats. And the right. stats won't mean a doggone thing if the physics ain't there. So, for me, that's why I focus on the pass rush. Because they while there's so much talk about the secondary – you can have a team with a shoddy secondary if you got a wonderful pass rush. You, 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 why would I, in fact, allocate so much of my salary cap to the secondary if I got eight angry men that can make the quarterback, you know, uh, um, uh, lose his poise? So, 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 um, for me, again, this is all about the future. It's Madden 20 is closer than we think, Madden 25, which we already had, right, is closer than we think. Another gaming system is closer than we think. So these goals, we got to hit the goal, and the goal has to be the realism that we see on Sunday, Monday, and Thursday. That's that's my ten. Another ten, I guess. That's the interesting thing you said. That I'm gonna throw it to Smitty and um, get a couple of his things and see if we can run through some of this list. The interesting thing you said there is, you know, with with Sim RK and uh, what is it? Competitive should be. It should be exactly what it is right now. It should be just settings. It should have nothing to do with game play. That's really what it should be. And that's what I'm going to keep emphasizing to them is, and I know they know this stuff, but I'm going to just keep saying, look, man, competitive, and they're saying it in the interview, stick to that logic. That the difference between these three modes are what's allowable, what's toggled on and off, and penalties and fatigue, stuff like that should just be a settings thing. It should have nothing to do with gameplay. And I'm going to tell you why. Number one, we know the obvious reason. Make football and just let that be across the board. But number two, what if Sim, and I hate talking in third person, so let me take that back. <laughs> What if I want to go in there and in competitive and just go, you know, play in mutton, whatever, and play that mode since it's only in competitive? I want to still be able to get the advantages of the gameplay. I don't want anything stripped away gameplay wise because now I'm playing competitive. I want to be able to go in there and play mutt and I can still jump back in the CS um, uh, Sim Standard Radio League and still play the same game. Just certain things might not matter as much. They need to stick with that. Don't try to get too deep into all of this crazy separation. It would, I, I get it. I, it's cool if they do that because we'll have our own separate mode at that point. But technically, I don't want them to focus on that. Just make the football game across the board. Because even in Mutt, and I, you know, I'll shout out some of the guys that I've actually talked to, even guys like Skimbo and Problem, they want real football. They just happen to be able to be good at Madden, you know, for what Madden offers. They're good at playing what Madden delivers them. But coverages and all of that stuff to really matter because he has good defense and he knows how to read coverages. That's his that's his game. But you got some competitive guys, and I'm not going to say their names. I'll be, I'll be fair to them. I've talked to them face-to-face. Some of them dudes want absolutes, always a pick, yep. never a drop. Never a fumble. And I feel like, guess what? You ain't never going to win $100,000 because <laughs> you're not going to beat some of these other guys because they're playing real football once the game is actually playing real football. We should not yeah. be compensating for for that, even though, like I said, I'm, I'm cool with it if you do that and you say, well, these are going to just be the rules and competitive. We're going to cut off fumbles, blah, blah, blah. All right, cool. Just don't design the game as if you're trying to make gameplay different in each individual bracket don't do that 
settings, cool, but not actual gameplay and how people behave. That's when you start messing up stuff, man. And, and like Zulu said real quick too, before I hit go to Smitty, that was very key what he said too about all the code and acknowledging yeah. that, look, man, some of us don't even know. How many times y'all heard me and Smitty say that? Some of them don't even know what stuff do, like sliders. And I was surprised Clint said that publicly. Some of them, Clint has only been there for five, six years. He don't, he, and he's honest enough in saying, you know what, I'm going to have to check on that. So I don't know how that actually works. I would actually really have to go dig deep and ask this engineer and that engineer to find out what it's really doing. That, a lot of information came out of that interview, but Smitty, man, what you got? Um, I mean, try to go back a little bit from what, uh, from what, um, we were saying before about the whole Bosa thing and all that, you know, with getting the game done a certain way, making the game function a certain way. The thing is, see, this is the thing. I fired up FIFA while you guys were, uh, while, while he was talking. And if you look at players in FIFA, they have physical attributes, mental attributes, skill attributes, and then you have their general physical information. But then they got traits. And then on top of that, you have players that have specialties or abilities, and they have, and these are the badges that they have. Like, uh, looked at Ronaldo, for example. Speedster, dribbler, distance shooter, acrobat, clinical finisher, and complete forward. He said, this player is multi-talented and excels in a number of key attacking areas, making him the complete forward package. So that's like one of them. But the point of the matter is, when you say, how can you do it? That's how. Mm. I can play with, I can play. I mean, I'm looking at the best of the best. He's obviously a top-end guy. But, I mean, you have players, for example, like Clint Dempsey. He's, even though he's an older player and past his prime, He's, he, he still has traits. He still has traits. And a guy that's a 56 overall or, you know, lower on the totem pole, like they got a guy 60, what was it, 66 overall here. He still has the attributes. He's a 21-year-old kid, but he's got the skill attributes. Now, let's say if I play with him during the season, right, and I position him to do good. And I use him more and more. He could develop traits. He could develop certain abilities. He may only have one or two. But because the way the game plays, he he I can make use of him. He has a purpose. Now, the, the yeah. stakes would be because he doesn't have the rating. So that's where the difference comes in. But, see, we're talking about playing Madden in a way that none of us are playing right now. So we're basically talking, hypothetically speaking, we're talking about all we're talking about in the game right now because of an ability, the way it impacts the game. Oh man, they can't do that. But if they change the whole infrastructure and how it flows, the ebb and flow of it, we don't know how it's gonna play for us. We don't know that. That's that's the whole X factor in the dark part of it. So what I'm saying is, see, and I agree with what you're saying 100 percent Sim, with what you guys are saying have the different mode settings, but even in NHL, NHL, it's not like because I put it on hardcore difficulty, there's, it's not taking away the mechanical functionality of the game right. at its core because I put on this difficulty. So I put it all the way back to rookie and I've still got the full functionality. It's not like, you know, uh, comp guys, 91 threshold in order to do this is if I'm a quarterback, I got to meet this threshold and I don't throw inaccurate passes. Like you see what I'm saying? But in Sim, it's different. Like, no, it should be like you said, the way it should be is one general standpoint, one base. And then yes, you have certain things that are segmented. I get that. But at the same time, I can see why it's such a challenge for the dev team. Because, look, everybody in – Rex and them get it all the time. I see it from dudes that tweet and everything. They want to be able to do everything with everybody. Mm -hmm. Every pass is going to be a completion. Every 
time I go for a SWAT or a pick, it's going to happen. That's why I say they want Street Fighter execution. No matter what the circumstance is, if I say I'm going to throw that fireball, I'm throwing it. I input the command, it better happen. That's the kind of way, that's the kind of game they want to play. So That's called arcade. I know, that's what I'm saying. Dog, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bruh, yo. <laughs> but if if you if if you want to play the game that way and they got to keep on teeter tottering and messing with stuff cuz they got to design it that way maybe that's the way the structure is right now and that's how they have to build it they have to do it that way it just sucks but the thing is and see this the, to get to the clint point okay i'll say this he said that he said that the wide receiver route running in the game is faster than real life. I don't know about that. I beg to differ. But the main thing I feel about that is this. If you're telling me that the receivers run their routes faster in Madden than they do in real life, meaning that he said that they're going their speed with their respective accelerations too, but they're going all out. So if they're going all out, number one priority, Madden 19, Player movement has to be addressed. Has to be. It yeah. has to be. There's no freaking way you could tell me these receivers are running, doing their double moves and everything with full speed, and you're telling me that it's respected the way these defensive the D backs and everything can just hummingbird and all that. That's why a problem can pick play three routes and pick the ball off still. Because of the way that moves. No, you make the game. This is this is why. Sim Sim streamed it. I've streamed it. I don't know how many times. I've made numerous videos, both public and private. Everything that's in FIFA, you need to just straight put that in the Madden, flat out. You have to make a decision. That there will show you the difference between guys like Problem, Skimbo, and others. He won't be able to cover three routes. He'll only be able to do, honestly, commit to one route or try and position himself realistically between uh a route or two based upon what kind of route it is and the play call so you won't be able to just unnaturally augment stuff and just do whatever they want you'll actually have to see football you will we'll see football happening in these tournaments and people will have to actually you know uh uh figure out okay am i gonna play between the ball am i gonna play Potentially the passing lane. What are these guys? What is this guy gonna do? If he breaks on me, am I gonna be able to recover because who it is that I'm using? Mm -hmm. If you you see what I'm saying now, they can't say the whole oh well. I want to be able to 100 do well because we all have to deal with the exact same player movement. We all have to deal with it. So you ain't got. That's why I said last week, dude. FIFA tournament, my man Sham got it. Old boy did a he did a trick move, kicked the ball up. Beautiful. That sucker was going to the right and he kicked it left. My man, that was the defender, user the defender, but he committed. He made him commit one direction and he he was out. He was out of the play and he got the shot. That's what I'm saying. You got to make a decision and you got to live with it. Dang. You can't say the game. You can't say the game broke. You can't say the game played me. You made a decision, and in real life, if you overcommit, you, that's it. You made your decision. Now you got to live with the consequence. Maybe there's somebody behind me. Maybe they could get there. But if they can't get there, I'm, I'm fresh out of luck. That's what I'm talking about, route, the, the, the routes. If you're telling me they're running with full speed and acceleration, Oh, the player movement paradigm must be changed across yes. the board in Madden 19. There, there is no oh, if they touch it up mm. and do a little something. No, 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 no. It <laughs> must. If you telling me That's those routes are ran faster than real life, especially the way I feel about them things. Oh, no, 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 no. It has to be number one. That that's a guarantee. It no it has to be done. All 22 players. All 22, not the guy you're controlling, all 22 guys, yeah. player movement. So, you know, because 
And I'm sorry I use FIFA so much, but that, that's what we, we, you know, that it, it like this is a game that's in your house, in your under your wheelhouse, and they have it in there. Momentum respected. I mean, I had to play earlier, dude. Uh, I'll, I'll show it later, but it's like dude overcommitted, Phenomenal. but his momentum drove him, and he couldn't control. He tried to control the ball, but he was going so fast forward, he tripped over his own teammate. Come on, man. That's Madden, it. Madden, ping pong, ting, 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 ting. No, uh-uh. Wow. That's got to <laughs> that's gotta go, man. You can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. Have the hummingbird motion and then sit up here and be like, yo, stick skills reign supreme. I, I don't think so, dog. If you want your game to be respected on that grand national stage, those are the kind of things that you got to do. I don't care that it's a different setting, but it has to be done. Look. FIFA players got to play the game as is. There is no special setting. They just got to play. Right. These guys, they got to play. NHL guys got to play. If it, MLB, the show did something, they got to play. There's no, no, I mean, they got different mechanics and stuff, but the point is you got to play. There's, you, you can't discount that kind of stuff. And, oh, the one other thing too, it was, even though it was a real quick point though, that, that he had made at the end of the show, I mean, at the end of that interview, but he talked about the two-man animations and said that, uh, like, Clint made his point about the two-man animations, and I don't, I don't exactly remember what it was he had said about it, but the thing is, you need to, once again, take notice from FIFA. Oh, I know what he said. I remember. Well, what was it? What was it he said specifically? The guy just did summarize it. He was one of them, Tex or uh, Gut Fox. One of them was saying they were talking about like having control and you know guys yeah. being pulled in a two man. And then Clint was saying, "Oh, so you're saying you rather have it to where it goes back to the old, you know, single um, like animation." And then Clint made the point. The problem is, and I'm glad he said this because this is what we've been saying: is that users we don't like the fact that when you're pulled into that there's no control and mm. that's that and i'm glad he said that that's what they have to address is you have these animations because 2k has them yeah it makes the game look beautiful but you lose control now where smitty is going fifa somehow yeah i mean come on man just <laughs> pop in the game yeah. and go and try to steal the ball and from somebody else and watch what happens seamless yeah they got to find a way to do that. They're playing yeah. something. That's they it. And, it. And the other thing, too, is to replicate the actions, because another thing he said was when it comes to them going after the ball, going up for catches, they just have a general catch animation or whatever that happens. But, see, the funny thing is that FIFA has multiple animations that, are, that, that uh, go with the situation at hand. So that means you'll see a guy whiff on a header, whiff on a kick, or try and kick the ball, try and go around, whatever, with the ball in the air, especially corner kick situations. You see those animations every time. You see guys all go after the ball. All the animations are slightly subtle. They're mm -hmm. different, but they're relative to the situation. Madden said, like I said, I have yet to see them. Maybe sim somebody in the chat could let me know something. I have yet to see 300 trench animations. I have yet to see 400 plus catch animations. All I'm saying is you can True. separate that paradigm and you can put those all those animations. Because when we seen one or two animations happen in college football, we ain't never seen before. It's like, yo, I threw the ball low to the ground and I'm used to seeing the same kind of anim. No, my man got on his knees, got to the ground, secured it, rolled over. I'm like, oh snap! So they they could go that far. So don't. So I can't. See, that's what I'm saying. I, I can't. I can't ride with you on. Okay, you know what? I understand. That's that's how it's got to be. All right. I can't be with you on that when the game that's under the same EA Sports moniker is. They they got it. It's freed up. The animations and all that stuff is freed up. 
Now, it took them time to build that, but the bottom line is they built it and made that paradigm work. They went from the two-man and they had FIFA had the two-man animation sequences before to get to replicate that stuff. And they built it to a point where they said, okay, you know what? We got to put this dynamic physics system in here because we can't keep replicating this and try and make it work in a in a in a scripted confine. And look how free the game is now. All them years of them constantly working at it, building it, and building it. And the game, like Sim said, it's not perfect. We're not the soccer diehard guys at all. There are dudes out here that will say this game sucks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Flat out. And just like you said, yeah. there's dudes that rather say, there's guys saying, man, EA needs to make another MVP baseball. MLB the show sucks. Or I'd rather play I'd rather play MLB 2K or whatever. So they there's – it's, it's being said all over the place. So we're not saying the game just just oozes perfection, but we're saying though, in the in the in the in the in the ring of we want this stuff to be done right and replicated in Madden, it's already done across the street. You know what I'm saying? And these people, they you're affiliated with them. You know what I'm saying? So this is why once again, when I hear Rex say, Oh man, man, you know, we on frostbite now and we're excited. We're eager to get this from that game and this and get Prove that it. and that. Okay, so since you're saying that, Prove it. I'm playing this FIFA game, right? That's on the same thing you on. All right. So I'm ex- I got some expectations. See, so that's what I'm, you know, so that's what I'm saying. There are things I gotta see. My number one thing, especially after Clint saying what he said in that interview. Player movement just straight went to the top. That's I it. mean, it's already it's already top priority. Don't get me wrong, but it it just that's that's it. No, that's nuclear now. It has to be in there, and this is the main thing. No matter what, whatever the heck it is, these dudes do, it cannot be augmented, altered with, tampered with. Especially if we're pleased with it, leave the game the heck alone, please. It's got to be left alone. It can't be. And I mean, once again, if it's not a Rex call, which I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be, but, you know, we know he got dudes and stuff. You know, he's got supers and all that. But the bottom line is there has to be a point where the game has to be left alone and whatever they did was cool because the game that me, Sim, and all these other game changers and stuff was playing at EA Play, this ain't, this game now is not the game, even with all the updates. It's not the game that we was playing. Just fix it. That's it. Yeah. Don't yeah. don't tune anything up or down unless it's a right. powerful consensus. Yeah. From everybody, oh no, that something's wrong here. Well, unless it's, it's game wrong. breaking. Yeah, unless, unless it's, it's game, game breaking. Basically, don't don't a, touch. A matter of how successful, how uns leave it alone, man. Go with the gut you had when y'all turned it in. Yep. That that's go it. with your vision. That's Simple it. as that. Exactly. That's well, guys, it. let's do some let's do some quick takes. We got 15 minutes, and I'm gonna throw them at to, to you and Zulu, and let's on a, let's try to do some quick takes. Like if we All can right. give like 30 second or so responses to each one, so we're gonna run through these really quick so we can get through the list. I thought uh, we'll do it in this order: Zulu and then Smitty, and then if I have anything to say, it'll come back to me. So first, the Zulu. What were your thoughts really quick on the traits determining behavior and what animation triggers, not necessarily outcome? It says the ratings still dictate the outcome. I think that long term that, that that could solve their issue with code. Just make that evolve, progress the game to the point where we don't have, I mean, and, and you've talked about this before, but progress, now that we know what we know, progress the game to the point where that's what ratings are. <laughs> like if you can control that and you don't know what all the ratings are and, and you got piles of PS2 code and PS3 code, just make the game about traits, traits and characteristics. Boom. Now you can control the game. And move forward. What you think, Smith? Same deal. Like I said, see it in FIFA. Need to do the exact same thing in Madden. Make the traits a factor, but it all in all, it should be a factor. Yeah. I kind of agree with that too. I didn't actually know that. I did think sometimes when you saw guys do certain things that it kind of boosts their success rate, but he confirmed that it doesn't actually do that. It just determines the way they behave, which is cool. That's that player separation. 
and then his trait will determine how i mean his rating will determine how successful he is all right the next thing zulu he said conservative pass rush was really designed to be more of a must rush he said it, it helps when you put it on conservative against wide out screen or just screens in general draws and scrambling quarterbacks so it's more the coaching adjustments this is another point were intended yep. to be situational what was your thoughts on that zulu mm -hmm. Uh, that was really I was I was upset about that. Number one, <laughs> no one knew, knew that. So right. you know, we're at the end yeah. of the cycle. It's a little late to be telling <laughs> us that. More importantly, though, I shouldn't have to sacrifice basic pass rush in order to stop someone from calling play action verticals and then just rolling out of the pocket. So they have to figure out a way to balance within the same set of defense alignment, right? They have to figure out a way to balance aggressive, so-called balanced and conservative relative to attributes. Because if you're telling me the only way I can contain a scrambling quarterback is to give him 10 seconds in the pocket, I don't consider that a solution. Absolutely. Smitty, what's your thoughts on that? Um, yeah. What, what Rex, I mean, what Clint said about what conservative is actually doing. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that one as well. See, I once again we weren't told this, so we didn't know. I thought that it would be part of the play call. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, like like it should factor into the play call that you choose and just go right ahead. You know, and and like like what Zulu said, if you want to have an aggressive rush, do your aggressive rush. But if it, but you know, um, you're just using a different kind of play. It shouldn't just be so quick. You know, it's too mechanical. It needs to be more looser. And on top of that as well, it should come to player ratings as to why they would jump off sides in the first place if you mm -hmm. decide to be aggressive or conservative or whatever. And plus, if you're going to make it so situational like that, I think it would have been better to have that be something you toggle before the snap if you're going to say, oh, it's more for a situation and we need to get stopped. Well, it would make sense to do that in that capacity, an audible adjustment to say, oh, this is how we're going to play. Just like how you do the zones. Flick up, flick down. It's very difficult to circle out three layers, toggle conservative balance and aggressive, then toggle back into your play when you're playing head to head. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's a little tough. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree with y'all with that too, man. First of all, I wish we would have known that. Because right. what it says, I mean, it wouldn't nothing lets me know that's what it's doing. And then I will agree with Clint. It it is situational. And I think he needs to listen to his own thought there. And what I mean by that is when people were complaining, especially in the competitive world, oh, I keep getting pulled off, and it as we saw it in the tournament, then stop leaving it on aggressive. Yeah. So I agree with that. However, I agree with what Smitty said. It's cool if you want that to be an adjustment where you're telling your guys ramp up, you know, it's third and 12, this could close the game out, cool. But there should be a trait or something or a behavior from an elite guy. You don't have to tell Von Miller to do that. Right. So it, they both could work. If you want to have, give us the coaching adjustment, cool, but that's the video game side of it. But the player itself, should ha that should be a trait or just a, a tenacity trait or something. You know, just – yeah, we could get deep with the traits. Right. Oh, uh, the next thing here. Oh, Zulu, he said awareness is used as more so a modifier to multiple areas. He didn't dive into that. So do you do you have any thoughts kind of on what you think he was saying? I think <laughs> I think awareness is a last gen attribute that they do not fully understand so certainly it helps the player execute what he's supposed to do but i don't think it impacts what the player does and again it's one of those things where i say uh, uh, uh the applicability of awareness should either matter or not matter so if you want play recognition to be important only for defense and awareness only be important on offense then implement that but you but they need to move we're, i mean we're heading into the ps5 at some point they're gonna have to make a major leap in the way in which uh player outcomes are decided and and, and you, presumably awareness would have been one of those so that's why when, when i think about sim players and so-called competitive players awareness should be a deciding factor what you guys submitted 
Um, really, I don't have I don't have much really to add on to that part there because I mean, since you didn't really dive into it, I don't really have much to comment on it. Uh, it is something though that needs to be. It needs to be expanded upon, to be quite honest. Instead of it just being awareness, like me just looking at these FIFA skill ratings, you have mentality, you know, where you have different aspects for mentality. Have that be part of your remote. Your awareness can be part of that in terms of how it is when it comes to situations based off of what position you're playing. Composure, things like that. We don't have any composure ratings in quarter. I just say, oh, he gets pressured. So... He's going to throw the ball away. But we had an element back in the day, dynamic player performance, and they took that out. So. Yeah, I wish he would have expanded on it because definitely a question I'm going to have for him is, like the guys were asking him on, the, on that podcast, we still need that thing that's showing us what all this stuff do. It would be nice to have a, a matrix of some sort that says awareness boosts this, 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 in combination with that and that and that. Because the only thing that we all know right now, at least uh, at least most of us do, awareness, when you give that to your guy CFM, his overall seems to go up. Yeah. But I still don't know what it does. I have no right. idea what it's really doing. So, yeah. The next one, real quick, man. Clint said he prefers to have more variance with the thresholds. For example, if uh, he says if a guy has a 91 zone, which we all know that's the threshold thing, specifically in Mutt, and a guy has a 97, he would like to still be able to take advantage or let's well i'm gonna attack the 91 he's the lesser of the two instead of the way it is now plan admitted that it's kind of vanilla for the most part if once you hit 91 most of the guys are going to react the same so he prefers to have more variance there and more nuance what you think uh zulu well um i think it was ada and as a matter of fact i think it was when you interviewed him um uh, a while back sim that ada was talking about how in the future they want to have techniques like you know um seattle runs a cover three different than let's say the steelers or you mm. know uh one team you know like the raiders rip liz is different than another squad's rip liz like they, they want to teach not just the cover three but how how utilize cover three cover four the the, the way they shade inside outside uh, uh and you know this is the kind of stuff my kid talks about all the time so my point will if you look at what a DB does and what a receiver does, you can't strip one from the other. So if you have a wide receiver who is, uh, and I'm, I'm assuming at some point Madden's going to get here because, you know, he started to kind of hint at that. But Ada was talking about, you know, if, if you have a wide receiver who does very well running slants, possession receiver, oh. and then you got another wide receiver who runs posts exceptionally well, you shouldn't be able to have one wide receiver who does everything unless he's like a 97, like a Terrell Owens. He could do everything. So I could see a, a, a reality where a DB, it, maybe he's one of those high awareness guys who's kind of an older brother, right? He's older, but he's got wonderful technique. You put a fast guy on him, he's like, okay, I got to play off him a little bit, or I got to get real physical. Again, I like the idea of a 97 being different from a, from a 91, but, again, but, but I want to think of it in terms of, okay, but – how big is he? How small is he? How fast is he? How quick versus how fast? How heavy is he? You know, is he a 205 pound corner, 197 pound corner? I think that that that's some very exciting news. But again, we got to we got to think of it in terms of big picture. You can't do anything to the DBs unless you do something to the wide receivers. Absolutely. Smith, yeah. what you got on it, man? Oh, man, like like pretty much, pretty much, he hit the nail on the head with it, man. Like I really don't have much to add on to uh, to the point. So Zulu got it. I ain't got nothing else to add on that. I'm with him. Yeah, Zulu killed it, man. We got one more, and I think that'll carry us out. But this is the last one I really wanted to ask. But just to give my quick thoughts on the, the zone stuff, man. I said that from from the beginning. Um, just to tell a quick story, I've told a lot of you guys, but I realize every week sometimes there's new people that come in and you guys may have missed old shows, so I'll reiterate some of the stuff. I always, Smitty does the same thing. When they introduce stuff to us, like when we go down early in the cycle and they tell us that they're doing this and they're doing that, and then they tell us how they're doing it, a lot of times there's moments like, oh. and let me explain to you what I mean. So when they said that they were going to do 
DB and wide out interactions a couple years back. And then when they introduced how they were going to do it, I remember that site. I remember that cycle just like it was yesterday. I'm sitting in there watching the presentation. Oh, yeah, he's showing the clips. Then they explained how they did it. So what we basically had to do is we had to, you know, do a two man sequence. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, no, no, because I already knew it was going to cause what we're seeing now. Yeah. People getting drawn together, et cetera, et cetera. So even with the thresholds, I did the same thing with that. I said, look, I get it, but that's not cool because exactly what Zulu said. That doesn't work. And then when I talk to guys like A Dub, and let's just say he he tends to agree with that. A dub, listen, I'm gonna tell y'all right now, if A dub gets half of the stuff that he's attempting to implement in this game going oh. forward. Y'all better get your get your football knowledge up because I'm telling you now, when he puts in the stuff, and yes, notice I said when he puts in the stuff, all of the stuff that we've talked about, I can say that without you know being too close to the line and getting pulled back, leveraging, backpedaling, like all of this type of stuff, technique, all of that stuff is in this man's plan, and it should be appearing in the game of Madden. When we all gotta wait. And see when that happens. But when he gets that stuff in the game, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear, man, I can't. Because uh, uh, right. I'm telling you, a lot of the sim crowd, I'm going to be honest, it's going to be a little too hard for you. Because let's just be honest, not everybody in the sim crowd knows football. I'm gonna be, I don't know everything about football. I'm sure I got playing against a guy like NYK who's coached and stuff like that as much as I know football and have played it. He might trap me in something. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, I fell for it. You see what I'm saying? Like once the game really gets to that point and he could disguise his coverage, he might get me. So I don't want to hear y'all complaining with stuff when the game does get to him. <coughs> Let's keep the same energy and be like, you know what? I got to get my skills up and get in the lab. But anyway, let's get to the very last point here. He says... Oh, and by the way, NYK is seeing that you're in the show, man. I, please comment on, because I know you sent it to me and Smitty on Twitter. I want to hear your thoughts on the pass rush thing. Um, and also, uh, was something else. Hold on, hold on. He, it was something else Kia said. I don't want to want to you know mess up what he said. Let me go to his tweet really, really quick, guys. Bear with me. He said, yeah, I was right. The pass rush. I want to hear your thoughts here in the chat on the, the pass rush, conservative pass rush, being more so of like a mush type of rush there. And the last thing, Zulu and Smitty, we got to address this one, and this, this will close us out. Clint said there's a difficulty basically with adaptive AI. Um, We've heard this before. Remember Rex said the same thing. Y'all know I talk about this all the time. But he said that the difficulty with putting in adaptive AI to the way that I'm sure all of us would like to see it as simulation gamers, a guy sitting down in the zone when he recognizes blitz or, you know what, I'm not going to carry all the way over across the field because they got a middle linebacker dropping in the middle. I'm going to just drop here. And, you know, AB does it all the time. For you guys that don't know that, this is the reason why him and Ben has great chemistry. It ain't that he's always open. He gets himself open. So... Stuff like that. Or like I said, recognizing the blitz coming and he just pops and do a smoke, you know, smoke screen or something like that. Or your corner recognizing, oh, I've seen this before. I'm gonna jump that route, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe your 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 line, you know, your your linemen recognize, oh, they're overloaded. Or I'll give you a perfect example. You watch the Houston Texans, and they a lot of times they roam uh your boy Clowney, right? And I was watching one of their games last year, and the commentators say every time Clowney stands in the middle, he's blitzing, and he does. So what if your lineman would, you know, now the adaptive AI, because I want it across the board, by the way. I want it everywhere, on the lineman, the quarterback, the running back, DBs, everybody. So what if your tackle cell, he's blitzing, and he doesn't blitz? But you go back and replay, and you see that he was anticipating the blitz and gets beat, stuff like that. So basically, from that premise, Zulu, what are your thoughts on what Clint said? Well, he said, you know, basically the difficulty with implementing something like that, though they want to do it, is 
when people decide that they didn't want their guy to do that, are you going to be okay with it? Are you going to be okay with your guy sitting down in the zone, but you didn't really want him to do it at that point? What's your thoughts I'm on okay. that part, man? Yeah, I'm okay if my rookie, who I got no business putting out there anyway, does it. I'm okay if my third string guy who is a veteran but has lost not only one step, not just two steps, but, man, I was trying to, you know, uh, draft his replacement. And I haven't done it. And now this dude is <laughs> jumping off sides in a neutral zone like he's been doing for the last three years. And it's increasingly getting worse because he's slower. So he's trying to anticipate the count. I don't want my dude Khalil Mack doing. I don't want him making. I want my my superstars to act like superstars. I want Hall of Famers to do things I couldn't conceive of, and I want everybody else. If I if they're gonna keep coaching uh, adjustments in the game, that's the kind of stuff where I think coaching adjustments take, take, can take over. Like the, the 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 purview of coaching adjustments is, you know, I'm tired of this Eagles fan coming at me with his four man natural pass rush. And I can't do anything about it. You know what? Let me tweak it so that the natural adjustment for all of my halfbacks is to block, regardless of what kind of pass play I call. Then when it's, you know, it's we're getting to the, the fourth quarter. I don't have to think about having my halfback to block because I've already in my coaching adjustments told him, hey, dog, I don't care if you're 102 pounds or 210 pounds, your job, as long as those Eagles are eating me, your job is to block and protect my quarterback because Derek Carr ain't no good if he's flustered. I say all that just to say real quick that we, we as gamers, as users, when we play Madden, don't have enough to do. Most people get in the huddle, pick a play, they're done. We don't have enough to do. So I'm just saying like, yeah, I would love to have that kind of stuff. In fact, give me control over the smart players. Dumb players are going to do what they're going to do sometimes. My elite guys might be smarter than me. I can accept the fact that Cleo Mack be like, hey, dog, wait a minute. They didn't run this screenplay three times on the last three third downs. You know what, coach? Uh, uh, let me try something. And my, my, my he's going to be a Hall of Famer. I respect him. The rest of the squad, let me try to coach them up. Let me try to tell them, hey, y'all. Watch out for this. Watch out for that. Play for these tendencies. So, again, you know, the game isn't perfect. The game needs work. But to say that, well, you know, you know, we need something for Sim and we need something for the comp, everyone would be happy if they could anticipate the screen that the dog then ran the last three times on third down. Hell, tell everybody, prep for the screen. It's coming. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. That's the kind of coaching adjustment I want. That's how that's the kind of adaptive AI I want relative to coaching decisions. Mm, I like that. What you got, Smitty? I mean, simply put, they need to make an A system. It needs to be an A system mm. in Madden. That that'd be that's like the ultimate goal, basically, so to speak, if you're gonna have something to work like that. Um, but and this is a point Marauder had made. He said, you know, we talk about these human-like errors and saying, like, you know, well, how do you want to program it? Shouldn't, you know, because it's, you know, human, like, uh, because it's a, you know, computer game at the end of the day. But this is the bottom line. I play FIFA, right? FIFA makes those kind of errors. Oh, I went this way because I thought this is what he was going to do when he actually went that way. The The... The tournament play that tournament that tournament player did, where he thought he was gonna go one direction and he shot it a completely different one. I I have those kind of instances happen to me and for me every time I play FIFA. I had an instance like that. I'm playing it right now. I'm like I've been playing it the past few minutes. I had an instance like that just happen. Defender was out of position. He thought I was gonna go one way. I kicked the ball a different direction. Oh snap! He try he lays out to try and make a play, but he's out of position. Yet he tries anyway. So it's like you you see all these different elements happen when they're in other games. It happens. It's feasible, but when we see it, when we bring it up to Madden, we got to chill with that point. And it's not to go at anybody. It's just the point of because it hasn't happened in Madden yet. It's like oh man, that's too far fetched. No, it's not. It's it's happening in other games. So it needs to be there, too. We need to see that kind of AI difference. We need to see that kind of intelligence happen. 
Because just remember, we were told, even though they, they're not they're not on that tech now, but we were told on Ignite, human-like thinking, all these calculations per second, all that interactivity that was supposed to happen. So that's just, you see what I'm saying? So to see it be promoted as such, that means it's possible. I see it happen in FIFA. I see the stuff happen in PES. And so there's no, there's no, oh, it can't be done. Yes, it can. It'll take, it may take them time to build it out, but they can do it. So. Yeah, man. Y'all know I'm going to agree with Smitty and Zulu. As a hardcore replicate the NFL sim guy, I want all of that. How do you implement it? Uh, I mean, again, I'm going to be biased, of course, because I know the Steel is better than any other team. Maybe it's a trait, man. You know, maybe you have a guy like AB might have that trait or chemistry with the quarterback to where, think about it. We watch football. How many times have you heard it when you watch your favorite team? Well, you know, maybe, you know, if your favorite team doesn't have a great quarterback, maybe you haven't heard it. But <laughs> you guys know what I'm saying. For all of the teams that have these great quarterbacks, you know, you, you can put obviously Brady and Breeze and. You know, I yeah, I'll put Ben in there. You know, Ben might not be a super elite guy, but he's a definitely a, an elite status. How many times have you heard him say that? Well, you know, when it's such and such down, Tom Brady's gonna go to Gronkowski. He knows exactly where he's gonna be. Ben Roethlisberger knows exactly what Antonio Brown is gonna do if they blitz. Expect you hear Gruden does a great job calling this stuff out, and Tony Romo, by the way. Oh, you know what's about to happen here if they blitz. Antonio Brown's going to turn it into a drag. Da, 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 da. Remember that play, guys? When and this is a perfect example, just came to me. When we play, I want to say it was when they played the Ravens in Baltimore, and Antonio Brown kicked over the water cooler because they had a play where Antonio Brown was running the drag, recognized the situation, and then turned it into a pro. He did like an outcut and was wide open. Ben didn't see him. Didn't see him. He's not looking his direction. So this stuff happens in the NFL. However, I see the other side of it if I'm a developer. Because you better believe it. Think about it now. <laughs> not us. But just think about all the millions of Madden players that would say, I didn't want him to do that. I didn't. I, didn't. I, I could see the difficulty of Clint's statement. Yeah. Clearly. I get it. You know what, Clint? You got a good point there. And I will say I can back his statement because I've heard it from him and Rex over the last couple of years. They 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 have they have thoughts and they have ideas where they do want to implement that. Because what did Clint also say? Clint is huge on AI. And that's what he keeps saying. Make the game smarter. Make it better. Make our guys understand what's happening on the field. But where I'm going to challenge Clint and where I'm definitely going to challenge Rex and everybody else, don't be afraid. Just do it. Like like Smitty said, FIFA has it. Make us deal with that. This is the NFL experience. And if you you know if you're afraid of getting it to a point where, well, what if guys doesn't want it on? You got to build that system out. You got to make it chemistry. You got to make it trait something. Where if I know I have a certain guy. If I have, think about this, guys. Well, one more thing I'm going to say, and then we'll get out of here. Um, thanks. Appreciate the donation, man, to uh, Erlach, I believe. Just gave us a $5 yeah. donation. Shouts out to him. Round Shout up. out to him, man. Appreciate you guys, man. Now, how many times, guys, have we heard this about certain cornerbacks? He's going to take chances. <laughs> he He's susceptible. He, he, the double move, he's going to always jump the inside route. You can beat him on that double move. What do they say about Artie Burns, Steeler fans? This guy's always peeking in the backfield. So my point is, especially for us Sim guys, you got to build your team accordingly. Build your team so you know exactly what kind of players you got. And then if they introduce chemistry into CFM, there it is right there. You can work on this stuff. And like some of you other guys are saying, just make these coaching adjustments work. Even like one of the guys said here in the chat, like run commit. My problem with run commit, I'm going to tell y'all what I hate about that. And I've always hated it about this. Just because I'm telling my guys to sell out on the run, they should be competent enough to be like, oh, pass, retreat, retreat, retreat. <laughs> they don't do that. 
Mm -hmm. It's almost like they just, they're not even focusing on it. Play, they just go blitz. He said blitz. Let's just blitz. No. And that's what we're talking about when we say adaptive AI. It's not just. Because what we don't want to happen, because this is the challenge I've gotten for some competitive players that I've talked to. Well, I mean, you don't just want it to be where, you know, when they recognize the play after five times. No, 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 no. We're not talking about that. We're talking about overall awareness of the situation, like Smitty alluded Word. to. Andrew Wilson stood on that stage for Madden 25, and he said, players will be making human-like decisions and reacting and X amount of calculations in 60 seconds or whatever, three, whatever uh -huh. seconds it was. This is what we're talking about. It's all we're saying. I need to see these guys aware of the situation. What is that, that play I showed y'all a couple of videos ago when I'm in three man deep and Cam Sutton, there's nobody on, nobody, no receiver or anything on his side. And instead of him pursuing the quarterback, he just stands there like he's in the marching band. What are you doing? You know, no NFL player does that. He's either going to keep drifting in coverage or he's going to go after the quarterback. There's nobody in his vicinity within a 50 yard radius. That's what we're talking about here. And as a sim guy, if my guy sits down in the zone and I didn't want him to, I'm going to hate it for that moment, but I'm going to be like, yo, that's dope. You know, that's dope. Now, maybe, you know, let's maybe, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself. Now maybe I got to go into prep and we got to work on the chemistry now because they were off. Come on, man. It's ways to make it work. That's all I'm saying. Don't be afraid of that innovation. We need that kind of AI. I would love for my cornerback to feel like, man, you know what? Smitty keeps burning us with uh, Marvin Jones, one of these dudes. And then my cornerback all of a sudden is like, you know what? I'm an aggressive corner. I'm jumping that slant the next time I see it. Bites on it. Smitty decides to call a double move because he's been setting me up with the slant all game and he gets beat. Right. And then I go look at the replay. I'm like, what did he do? And the replay shows me that he jumped the slant. I would be cool with it. I'd be like, dang, Smitty set that up, man. He's been running slants all game and giving up six yards, eight yards, 10 yards. Then all of a sudden, when it matters, it's third and six, fourth quarter. And my guy's like, yo, I'm jumping it. I've seen this coming. I would love that. And you know what that would be? Smitty out coached me because I should have told my guy to stay home. That's where the coach adjustment comes into play. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Play the sticks. Don't get caught looking. Like, play, don't, don't try to be a hero. Just make the tackle. Come on, man. There's ways to do it. So didn't need to want to run run too far right there, guys. Uh apologize for that. But I think that was the last point. I didn't even know we was going to cover that one last, but I think that's the one that we all can agree is make that happen, play a movement, add on, you know, weight and momentum and all that stuff, meaning something. If you can give us that stuff, let, let's be honest real quick, and then we'll, we'll get out of here. If Mad 19 can introduce player movement, some real player movement, like Smitty yeah. said, maybe a 22 man, everybody has to respect player movement. They can improve AI, and they can improve the physics in the game where the weight and momentum is actually taken in, you know, into account. Even if you can't fully flush it out, at least enough where we can see, oh, wow, because of his momentum, he couldn't. The game is leaps and bounds better than Madden 18. Mm -hmm. And that's why Guy, who tried to criticize, that's why I said Madden 18 is not as bad as people think it is. The game is not trash, in my opinion. It just, you have these moments when you're like, dang, nothing matters there. Would have been nice if that could have, if they fixed those things, the game is on another level. Just those things. So, that's all I got, man. Well, before we go, Zulu, first and foremost, we thank you for coming on, man. Did you have any closing remarks? Uh, Madden uh, 757, uh, 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 whenever he calls in the show, he always wants to remember that Madden was designed as a teaching tool. Mm. And I would love for the developers to remember that we have practice mode and skills trainer. Yeah, you, Any change you yeah. implement in the game, put it in the game and allow practice mode and skills trainer to acclimate us to the new version of Madden. And that's all I got to say. Yeah, Smitty. No, I mean, other, one, other than... 
his sentiment basically took it right there. But now, uh, appreciate everybody being on the show, commenting, always coming through. You know, um, Godspeed, definitely appreciate you coming through, fam. And yeah, uh, yeah man, I said player movement priority one. Priority freaking one after what you said in that interview, Clint. Priority one. <laughs> mm That is P1. So um, we'll see what happens, but that's P1 for me, man. So yeah, man. Hollywood sports actually thanks Hollywood. It reminded me of a point I always make. As many toggle options as you can have, the better. Make something yes. like adaptive AI toggleable on and off. If because to me. I would say just keep it on, but I think that's your solution, dev team. For anything that you're not sure if everybody will like something, make it something you can turn on and off. Just that simple. Now, I'm not a coder, but I'm saying if you can code the game to have different play styles, you should be able to have uh, some type of toggle option to allow you to have this enhanced AI on or off. I'm just saying. So there's your solution right there. Make this stuff and give everybody the option to cut it on or cut it off. Just that simple. Well, all right, guys, that's going to do it, man. Again, we want to give a huge shout out to Zulu. We thank him for coming on. Godspeed. Um, everyone who came through and dropped a donation, um, Antoine, Erlacher, there was somebody else. I apologize if I don't remember um, the name, but you all know we always appreciate that. And, yeah, we'll be back next week. Um, Guess that's it, man. <laughs> I don't have anything else. So y'all be easy. Have a good weekend, and let's stay on these devs, man. Because, because like I said, you know, last little thing again, I will say, usually by around this time, you know, just to give you guys an update, me and Smitty usually would have already seen what's going on. We haven't. So I don't know. We'll see how things go this particular cycle. And even if we did, we still couldn't tell you nothing. But we say this so you guys know that everything that we are saying tonight is fully genuine because i have no idea where they're going you know i have a hint of what i think just because of past conversations but i literally have no idea no nuggets i could i have i don't have nothing i don't know exactly what's going on so maybe we'll we'll find out shortly hopefully we will we are communicating with them as far as feedback and stuff like that but i haven't mm -hmm. officially seen the whole plan so there you have it, man. Hope you guys have a good night and a good weekend, and we'll catch you guys next week. Peace. Peace.